Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Ragnarok, and specifically a book that Ignatius Donnelly wrote as a sequel to Atlantis, the Antediluvian World, which is titled Ragnarok, the Age of Fire and Gravel. And just a brief overview of Ignatius Donnelly, if you haven't seen my other videos or aren't familiar with him from, um, from before. <clears throat> Ignatius Donnelly is... is almost certainly the most important Atlantis researcher other than Plato, if we can count Plato himself as an Atlantis researcher. Because Ignatius Donnelly wrote a book titled Atlantis, the Antediluvian World in 1882, which is a bestseller, and which introduced to the general public the idea of Atlantis as a real civilization. Before it had been the subject, an obscure subject among scholars, uh, and it, it wasn't really a... a an idea that was popularized and had become well known among the general public, but all of that changed with Atlantis, the antediluvian world. And sometime later, he wrote a book that was that is less well known than his original first book, which was titled Ragnarok: Age of Fire and Gravel. And in this book, he claimed that a comet impact had actually been caused the destruction of Atlantis, and that the um, events of Ragnarok and the destruction of Atlantis were essentially one and the same. Now, this is a lot of information, and, and it's really important to ask the following questions. But first of all, just this idea of a compact impact, comet impact having destroyed Atlantis, Ignatius Donnelly was way, way ahead of his time, and he can really be compared to Jules Verne, the famous science fiction author. In his far-sighted visionary view of the future in which he envisioned this these ideas that scientists are only recently and have only in the last few decades have come to really embrace and the science of asteroid and comet impacts and their influence on the earth's geology at the time donnelly wrote his book which was in the 1880s was in a very very early stage this was before for example the the idea that the Behringer Crater, which is also called the Meteor Crater, and it's a crater in Arizona, which is around a mile wide, and there's a lot of iron underneath the, the surface of the, the crater. And the, the person who proposed that this, that, that this depression, that this giant hole in the ground was actually an asteroid impact or a comet impact was actually formed by either an asteroid or comet impact is a man whose name has been um, the, the this this crater is actually named after him now his name was Daniel Beringer and this was only uh, proposed in 1903 which was almost uh, two decades after Donnelly wrote the book Ragnarok the Age of Fire and Gravel and this is also around 20 years before the Tunguska the Tunguska event which was a hypothesized meteorite or comet fragment impact in the, the tundra of Russia. And of course, the idea that the asteroid impact or an asteroid impact had led to the extinction of the dinosaurs was only confirmed in 1980, which is only, only four decades ago, and the shoemaker levy impact in 1994. And I know that these are really recent events because when I was younger, um, these were really, really big stories um, that I remember. Some of the first memories growing up for me was the Shoemaker Levy impact and and the, the images that I remember seeing on TV and on the internet in, in its very early stage. And so these are very, very recent ideas. And we can really see that Donnelly was far, far ahead of his time. But what is this Ragnarok that that Donnelly made as his title of his book. If you're not familiar with what Ragnarok is, it is probably the single most important element of Norse mythology. Here you can see the god Thor, a Norse god, fighting and trying to subdue this serpent of Midgard. And while I have my personal interpretation of what that is, that I'll be discussing in future videos, let's just stick to the basics for now. The Norse pantheon is similar to the Greek pantheon in that there, in the Norse cosmos, there are these gods who 
who rule over this realm called Asgard and, and Midgard. Actually, the, the gods rule over Asgard, and Midgard is the realm of, of humans. But the idea is that these realms um, that, that, com that comprise a portions of this world tree called Yggdrasil, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's, it starts with a Y, like Yggdrasil or Yggdrasil. The idea is that this realm of the gods is ultimately doomed to be destroyed. And that this destruction is both inevitable and that it is cyclical. And that this realm of the gods is destined to not only be destroyed, but to be reborn, then ultimately destroyed, and then reborn and destroyed over and over again. And specifically, Ragnarok refers to that destruction that happens at the end that completely wipes out this entire realm of the gods. And so this idea was first introduced and written down by a, a uh, scholar from Iceland who was actually a Christian. And so he, his perspective of these North myths wasn't as a true believer, but as a compiler and as an objective observer of these ancient stories that had long predated the Christian era. And that these were written down in these... Um, in two works known as the Prose and the Poetic Eddas in 1220. But again, the idea of Ragnarok long, long predates this time to an age where we are not actually, we have no idea how old these stories actually are. And the key ideas of Ragnarok and Norse mythology are that it's a cyclical view of the cosmos, which is different from the Christian worldview, because the Christian uh, cos cosmological worldview is linear going from paradise to the fall to the flood and then ultimately to um, the coming of the savior christ and salvation and the kingdom of heaven and judgment and so one of the key takeaways as i've mentioned before is that ragnarok is ultimately inevitable and also it's that Ragnarok leads to the destruction and the death of the gods. That is, these gods who are immortal can actually be destroyed. If, if there's, the, the gods cannot be killed by anything else other than Ragnarok in a sense. Ragnarok is that, is that immovable object that even the gods cannot, God, even the gods cannot move. And what's most interesting about Ragnarok and how it relates to the study of Atlantis is that Ignatius Donnelly argued that Ragnarok and the events that had led to the destruction were one and the same. That is, the destruction of Atlantis was Ragnarok, that there was no difference between them, and specifically that the, both the destruction of Atlantis and Ragnarok were triggered by a comet impact. Now, these are very, very bold claims, and like many extraordinary claims, we have to have extraordinary evidence in support of those claims. The topics to be introduced and to be discussed and further elaborated are way beyond the scope of a single video. But they raise very, very interesting questions that I'll be discussing in the future. And that is, if Ragnarok and the destruction of Atlantis were one and the same, could the following be true? Now, this isn't actually really explored in Donnelly's argument. Donnelly really focuses on, on the comet impact theory and the evidence for it, but he doesn't really go into connecting Ragnarok with Atlantis. And so some of the relevant questions that we might ask are, could the destruction of Atlantis have not just been due to some unlucky turn of events of a low probability, an unfortunate series of events, so to speak, but have been inevitable. That is, could Atlantis's doom have been foreordained from the very beginning with, with the only thing that was uncertain being the precise date and the day of its destruction? Because we look at Atlantis as this obscure story and this Atlantis was just destroyed one day, either because the gods punished them for it, or because it was just destroyed and it was just this natural disaster that happened. The idea of Atlantis's destruction have be, have being this inevitable event that is, in a sense, preordained and foreordained by 
heaven, by destiny, by God, is an idea that we need to really consider if we are to take the idea that Ragnarok and Atlantis were one and the same event. And the other idea that really emerges as a consideration of comparing and equating Ragnarok with Atlantis is that does it, is it possible that the story of Atlantis is not only relevant to our understanding of our past, but it is actually possibly a prophecy about our future? Because the idea of Ragnarok is really, really, one of the most important aspects of that idea of Ragnarok is that it is a cyclical phenomenon. It doesn't just happen once. It happened before, it's going to happen again, and again, and again, and again. And so, if Ragnarok and Atlantis are actually related, or actually even completely one and the same, then we have to really be concerned about the possibility that Atlantis could actually so-called quote-unquote rise again and be destroyed in the future too. That is, Atlantis is relevant to our future, not just our past. And finally, going back to the comet impact idea, what evidence is there that Donnelly's hypothesis of a comet impact at around 12,000 years ago is actually true? Because this is an idea that is really, really could be considered obsolete in a sense, because Donnelly didn't have the scientific uh, data that we have today. And so the idea that he could have actually been correct in proposing a hypothesis about a comet impact 12,000 years ago seems to be completely unrealistic and unlikely. But as we will see, there is very, very strong evidence that a comet impact indeed really did happen at around this time. And this is a hypothesis that has really uh, been developed in the last few decades, actually even just the last decade. And there's a group called the, the Holocene Comet Impact Working Theory. There are also uh, people outside the specific fields of geology and astronomy who have also popularized the idea. Some of those um, independent scholars include Graham Hancock, and also a geologist named Randall Carlson. And this is a very, very important idea, the idea that a comet impact destroyed Atlantis, or not necessarily as it relates to Atlantis, because just the idea of a comet impact in and of itself is real, is an interesting scientific topic that is being actively researched today. And so I will be discussing all of these videos in greater, all of these topics in greater detail in future videos. But this is just an introduction to several ideas. The idea of a comet impact, first of all, having destroyed Atlantis and having occurred overall. The second being the idea of Ragnarok and its relation to Atlantis and the implications of those two things being the same thing.